Hello, and welcome back to Regular Houdini. Today, we'll be talking about a super handy feature that can be used all over Houdini to make your work faster and your life easier. I am speaking, of course, about this funny little character here, the humble backtick. Located to the left of the one key on your keyboard, this key is actually called the Grave Accent, and it's a character used in many languages, I would say probably most famously in French, for me anyway. However, we're going to call it by its more friendly name, the backtick. Okay, so how can we use these little guys and what can they do? Well, basically what a backtick can do for you is take an expression, evaluate it, and then return that numerical value as a string so you can use it somewhere where you would need a literal string value. Let me show you what I mean. Here we've got a copy to points, and it's copying several different geometries to these points by making use of the piece attribute functionality. Now, if you don't know how this works, you probably want to go back and watch my previous video about this functionality here. Now, if you do know how this works, let's go. So just like in the previous video, we've got our name attribute being connected by the connectivity stop, and we're, then we're randomly generating the matching values on the other side there. Okay, so let's say you need to assign a different material to each variation. Well, this is a great use case for backticks. First, we need a way to loop through each variant before we go through the copy to points. So let's drop in a for each connected piece. And now it's gonna give us another connected connectivity node. We've already set this up, so we can delete that. Then select the for each end here, and where it says piece attribute, just change that to name so it matches our setup. In the previous video, we changed the class attribute to be called name, if you hadn't seen that. Depending on which version of Houdini you're using, there might be an expression in here by default, and you need to clear that out first. So hold Control and Shift and left click, and that will clear the expression. Now you can change the value to name. This will also work by default if you leave that extra connectivity node in here, by the way, but it's bad housekeeping to have redundant attributes just lying around for people to trip over. Okay, so now let's drop down a material node and put it inside the loop. So it's going to run once for each variant we feed into the loop, giving us a chance to assign a material to each one. And in the mat network, let's create three materials, and the names here are gonna be important, so let's keep it simple. Mat zero, mat one, mat two. Now, in the spreadsheet, if we look at our name attribute, we can see that it corresponds, zero, one, and two. And this is the key here, because now we can go into our material node, and let's just select our first material here so we have the correct path. And you can just type this out if you want also. And now let's delete the zero at the end and input this expression. Make sure you've got the back ticks in there, right beside the one, remember. So what this is going to do is for each iteration of the loop, it's going to take that incoming name attribute for each variation and append it to the end of our string. So the result is the exact same as just manually typing the numbers, and it's so much faster and cleaner than having to use groups or, God forbid, assign materials manually. Plus, it means I get to say procedural one more time. Okay, so what's happening here? The backticks are saying to Houdini, basically, this in here, this is code, and it will evaluate that code to get the number that the code would produce. Then it converts that number to a string, which you can then use in Houdini anywhere where you need a string. If you're not sure of the difference between a string and a numerical value, well, you are SOL. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. But um, it is a, out of scope of this video, so I encourage you to Google. All programming languages use this delineation between value types. So you can look it up in JavaScript or Python or whatever, and it, it's all going to be about the same. Houdini uses strings all over the place, especially when it needs to point to another node, like in a material path or any path. You can use this in a group node, for instance, to create groups dynamically. You can even use this in a file cache node to specify different output paths, etc. Literally anywhere. Amazing. And remember, this is code, so you can do all types of funky shit in here. Let's say you have four variations, but only three materials that need to be used. Well, we can just go into our backticks here and drop in a modulo operator. Again, Google if you don't know. And now our name attribute, now if our name attribute goes above, say, two, then this number will reset to zero and count back up again. So now you don't have to worry about making a material per variation, and this setup won't break. Oh my God, that's the funky shit. But let's say you don't want every single sphere to have the same material. You want a random material per instance. No problem. Let's create an attribute delete node here, since we don't need any of these attributes from this point on. It's always a good idea to clear them out. 
Just put an asterisk in each field here and that's going to tell Houdini to delete everything. This asterisk is a part of a special language within Houdini called group syntax. And that's actually the topic of the next video in this series. So check that out if you're curious about what it can do. TLDR, it can do a lot. So let's again drop down a for each connected piece. And this time we're just gonna leave it at default. And what we've got is a loop that runs over every single instance that we've copied, which in this case is 1000 instances. So for each iteration of the loop here, we want to generate a random number between zero and two, which again corresponds to our material names. And then we're going to use the backticks the same way we did before, except instead of referencing the name attribute, we're going to generate that random number. Okay, so click on the for each node here and create a meta import node. This creates a meta node that has information about the actual loop itself, which is very useful. Let's rename this to meta1 for clarity. Now we'll again put down a material node. We'll select our first material. We'll delete the zero at the end. We'll add two backticks that we're going to put our code into. What we need to do is create a random number, and that requires a random seed. We need a different seed each time, otherwise we're just going to get the exact same number. Luckily, the meta import node contains an iteration attribute that keeps track of the current iteration of the loop and provides a different value each time. Perfecto. So first, let's grab that attribute with a detail expression. And you can see that it's a detail attribute by middle mousing on the meta node here. So now we've got that. We need to wrap it in a rand function like so. And now we're going and now we're using that as the seed. By default, though, we're just getting a value between 0 and 1. So outside of the brackets, let's multiply it by the number of materials we've got, which is 3. Now we can see that we're getting a warning here. And if we middle mouse, it says the node mat 2.97 blah 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 cannot be found. So actually, our expression is working fine. There's just no material that has that name that it can find. The issue here is that the rand function is giving us a float value, and we need an integer. It's an easy fix though. We just need to wrap our rand function inside of this utility int function, which essentially just chops off the decimal of any float value and then calls it an int. Works for me. And now we can see that each instance does indeed have a random material assigned. Bada bing. Okay, very fine people. That's it for this one. Hope this helped you tick some boxes on your workflow checklist. I'll be back soon with more useful info and more bad jokes.